Professor Brian Cox, that's what you go. Look, your, your, uh, your face is your past. Look, there it is. But I have to wear your Sorry, face really, to, first, as a past. It's unfair. Ever, it's the first time you've ever said that. Yeah, but as I said to you, I've had to start calling you Professor Brian Cox mm. because we've noticed increasingly that people really don't believe you're a professor. Yeah. They just say Jim al Khalili, don't they? Occupational They just habit. say Alice Roberts. But with you, Professor Brian Cox, underline, really is one. Yeah, yeah it's too much pointing. It, it devalues the... Uh, Will you reduce the pointing standard. in this, I think? I think the first show we did back in Aberdeen, you're pointing all over the shop, and then now, like any of the great kind of, you know, stars, uh, you've realised that, save the point, they're sitting there, they're right, sitting, just leaning in, leaning in, and then suddenly you point and they go, yes, yeah, like Elvis, yeah, Elvis, they always had loads of terrible acts before Elvis, so people were ripping up the seats beforehand, yeah. and then suddenly Elvis came on, everyone was, and you, the same thing, the half an hour of that physics, and then, Point. It's also kind of the, the, the catchphrase thing. It's like Brian Blessed, right? He doesn't mm. walk on, walk on to Gordon's alive. No. He well, he doesn't walk on, does he? He charges on and goes. Aah! It's quite frightening, isn't it? <laughs> he did that the first time we worked with him. Do you remember that when we we introduced him and before we'd even finished saying Blessed, he charged in, screamed at the whole of the front row, yeah. Radio Four audience, many of them not that well. That's why they come <laughs> there for a bit of shelter. And suddenly there's Brian Blessed reinvigorating them. Gordon's <laughs> alive. He, really, he does heal, doesn't he? I think he yeah. heals with his energy. Um, so what we we finished this is the final one of the tour, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Forty-eight Four, dates. Forty-eight dates. Hammersmith. Um, what has been for you? Because you've enjoyed it, haven't you? Yes, very much. Travelling the country with you, it's a, it's a dream, really. It is a dream, isn't it? It's, it's, we are the Thelma and Louise of BBC Broadcasting, yeah. except we're not going to have that end. I, I don't want to drive off the cliff. Well, no, because the no. country's doing a reasonably good job of that anyway, so we don't... Yeah, let, let's watch the others drive off the cliff, yeah. and then we'll feast upon their bones. Yeah. <laughs> but it has been... Uh, I, I enjoy going to Blackburn because in Blackburn we found out that 27 years ago you set off the fire extinguishers uh, behaving like a very naughty young rock band as you were then yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and they haven't forgotten that. It's the, most, it's, it's, a really, uh, it's the worst possible name for a band from Oldham because you, people go, what's your band called? You go, duh. <laughs> you go, duh. You go, duh. <laughs> You go, no, it's like, it's like, dare. So you have to do it in an American accent. You go, oh, dare. I never thought that. Duh. 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 You, you wouldn't call a band from Oldham duh. See, that's the kind of thing that I've enjoyed on tour is we're getting off stage and then sitting in hotel rooms watching 30 year old footage of you playing what was then called the Town and Country Club in London. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And seeing that all. And, and now, because it's a different kind of reaction with this audience, isn't it? To a rock audience. To a rock audience, <laughs> yeah. It certainly is. So let me tell you about inflationary cosmology is different from uh, playing your one hit in inverted commas i think we got to number 47 in the was that we're not going to take it no what was it called we're not going to take <laughs> it <laughs> something like that wasn't it it was called abandon it called abandon. It go? if you abandon me tonight will last forever i'm stranded here inside this desert called my soul oh that is good isn't it deep i love it a, a desert called my soul is up there with the number of times mission talked about things being like a runaway train yeah we've had some good actually that's been good hasn't it driving between the venues we've had a great playlist haven't we it's been dominated mainly by Bauhaus. it's been every time that you've played things like Bauhaus, because i think we are going to do it some like we will do a club night won't we yeah. where we just Bauhaus, play but, sister of mercy alien sex fiend um and then suddenly barbara streisand doing send in the clowns a bit of L- little bit and of there and then barbara barbara streisand's cover of bella the ghost is dead which is yeah less well known but i think it's long uh, isn't it it is it is very long <laughs> it's half speed so of half tempo with a jazz <laughs> piano but that's very good and um, and also dark entries by um, bernadette peters 
That's very, very, very good. Yeah, that one of is... the best covers, little known again. That was the beautiful thing of when we drove through Ashton under Lyme, having listened to all that and imagining you going into Boots, probably quite a confident 14-year-old, mm. just saying, yeah, I'm buying the eyeliner for myself, knowing that you were, you know, getting ready to go out for a night to dance to Duran well, Duran, amongst dance. others. We say dance, it's walking backwards and forwards, staring at the ground with an overcoat on. But oh, you did the full thing, so you did the full Bauhaus. Oh, second-hand overcoat from Athletics Palace in Manchester. Uh, the the most pointy shoes that I could afford, but then the very pointy ones are quite expensive. So they're kind of some weird suede boot type things that were semi-pointy. I used to walk backwards and forwards, staring at the ground, and unusually waving one hand. I so never hand realized. Sort of like doing that sort of thing. So in terms of judgment of wealth would be down to the sharpness of a toe. I, I, That's a great, I'd not I known. Mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of the IMF use it now as a sort of measure of um, So if you wealth. see a large number of people coming in from a country with, with winkle pickers, yeah. then you can know that they, they carry with them um, enormous wealth. Yeah, yeah. Whereas those with flatter, I mean, in fact, we I can even notice it here. Notice that my shoes definitely flatter and blunter than, than yours. That's true. And you are definitely more wealthy You've than me. You've got the red shift socks on as well. Yeah, I have. Spectrum. I'm not sure which so, so planet these, these socks uh, you can see re represent. That, you can see that there. That, that's um, that's uh, probably the spectrum from Quasar 3C273. Um, that's the H-alpha line, this one here. So they're very, they're very they're excellent socks. I also think, I mean, uh, we, we've also commented quite a lot, actually, uh, on the tour about our different um, attire. Yeah. Because yours is more sort of a wool chic. Mine looks like if you opened a bin liner that had been left out of a Red Cross charity shop, I might come out from that bin liner, having been left there by someone who no longer <laughs> wanted me. Yeah. Whereas you have got a new series of your, is it one jacket or two jackets? We yeah. don't know what's going on. Should we reveal the jacket secret? Let's find out. It's one. It's one jacket, ladies and gentlemen. It's, one it's just jacket. one jacket. Um, so, uh, we're going to Also, these t-shirts are available in the foyer. That, I'll tell you what, in terms of, in increasing the truly wonderful nerd wardrobe you have there's a series of graphs that are now available with footnotes i think you have the most heavily footnoted yeah. t-shirts that i've yet this seen this is the inflationary multiverse and it's got it says there look uh, the multiverse note this is on a t-shirt note that the scale here is wrong the typical distance between bubbles is vastly bigger than their sizes our type of universe might be relatively rare in being old enough and big enough to support the evolution of intelligent life. See, I like the idea. And the Nobel Prize for Physics goes to Brian Cox for this spring's selection of cotton wear. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Um, so we did, we'll just talk very quick, we did Q&As every single night. And um, what, what for you have surprised you about being a question that's come up over and over again? What, what surprised you in terms of the audience's interest? The, um, the, I mean, the usual cosmology questions come up about what's outside the universe, or what is the universe expanded into, or what happened before the Big Bang. What happened before the Big Bang is something that, that we talk about. I mean, it's the, our current best theory for the origin of structure in the universe is a theory of what happened before the Big Bang in the sense that you define the Big Bang as the time when the universe was hot and dense. Mm. So we have, a, we have good evidence, not, not, not overwhelming, but good evidence that the universe was in existence before that doing something else. So you got a lot of questions about that. Also, are we living in a simulation? See, now that was down to uh, Elon Musk. It must have been about halfway through the tour that that interview went up where yeah. he, I mean, this to me is one of those bits where you go, hang on, he says there's a one in a billion chance that we're not living in a simulation. Yeah, I think he was, he was pushing that a bit. Um, the, but the, 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 I think the correct way to weight that statement is to say that it is possible that we're living in a simulation. And, and then you start asking interesting questions about uh, it, how would you know? And also the interesting question, which always gets a laugh actually, but it's not meant to get a laugh, is, is would you care? Mm. And I think it's quite a deep question, actually. Does it matter? Is, is your experience of the world, your personal experience of the world, uh, contingent on the hardware and software that gives rise to that emergent experience? Well, I think that's not dissimilar to one of the things that I'm always banging on about, but that the idea that whether free will's an illusion or not, 
it appears that it's not in our day to day and there's no reason to in any way attempt to live your life as if it's not because that ultimately becomes a, a impossibility anyway yeah. in the same way with the simulation it's not as if you are going to be able to take you know the blue pill or the red pill whichever one it is and then go oh actually we're all living as kind of you know energy sacks for an alien because that's not going to happen <laughs> the simulation <laughs> is i'm just an energy <laughs> sack it's actually a reasonable description of a biological organism yeah what's well, well, an energy sack or is it an entropy sack was it, thing, it's, a, it's a local island of order, which is existing by radiating more disorder out into the universe than it uh, takes in, in the form of food or, if you plant, sunlight. So, yeah, so I think Entropy Sack, which is a great yeah. name for a band. I mean, that's, well, that's, that's one of our games has been constantly coming up with uh, uh, any band. that Basically, we found out that any two words can become a John Peel band. So uh, that was uh, Entropy Sack. Then, of course, formerly Energy Sack, uh, a band that have just come out of Luxembourg and uh, going to be playing more of them on uh, Friday. Uh, so, yeah, we've, <laughs> and, and you do find there's, uh, you know, Quantum Fluctuation. Quantum Fluctuation, uh, not a band I was expecting to uh, listen to this year. It was a little bit dancey, but, uh, yes, yeah, so I rather enjoy that rhythm or did i or did i not so sure anyway john walters so uh we're back on tour in um what's about four months four months uh so uh may may um similar show but different because uh it'll think new things will have been discovered yeah in fact during this tour i should say mm. interestingly the when i started the tour the the standard kind of estimate for the number of large galaxies in the universe was 350 billion and halfway through the tour, a new paper was published which suggested that was an underestimate. And now the, the better estimates, certainly including smaller galaxies, are devoted to trillion. So about, give or take, ten times as many as at the start of the tour, uh, now the estimate is larger. So, you know, things keep changing. There may be new discoveries. We discovered there may be an ocean of liquid water below part of the surface of Pluto during the tour. We talk about those What's things. the thing about Europa as well, the, uh, oh, um, the uh, ocean under the ice? ice There's now some, yeah. Probably. So, so I talk about a moon called Enceladus, which has fountains of ice rising up from the surface. And it seems as if Europa may be the same as Jupiter's moon. So the, the number of habitats out there potentially in the solar system where we might be able to find microbial life or some simple life is increasing, seems by the day. Which, well, not quite, but you know what I mean. So anyway, we'll be back on tour on, we think, annoyingly, uh, our tour promoters just realised that we're not starting on May the 4th, which has become a very important day for many uh, Star Wars uh, obsessive like yourself. Uh, it's probably going to be May the 5th, and then we end preposterously at Wembley Arena. That is preposterous. It is it? preposterous, isn't it? And in the in-between time, we're going to put out some of the Q&As that we've done in various locations in, uh, from Edinburgh and Blackburn and Brighton and Oxford and London and everywhere else. Yeah.